Hey guys, so the light's fading here in D.C. on uh, this fabulous Wednesday evening, and uh, I'm going to try and get this in before I lose the light entirely. Uh, here's the name of the game. So, I've been playing around both with split opposites and split time same direction inversions, and I noticed something very peculiar about the two of these. Namely, both of them seem to involve five downbeats for each of the poi heads, at least when you're doing them in this kind of symmetrical fashion where I have both a left poi leading and a right poi leading inversion, right? When I'm doing it in split time same direction, if I count the number of downbeats of the orange poi, I get one, two, three, four, five before the pattern repeats. And it'll be the same with the blue poi, right? Likewise, if I go into split time opposites, I get one, two, three, four, five downbeats once again. Now, um, having just gone through uh, Albert Einstein's biography from Walter Isaacson, the question that will come to mind is, well, if they have the same number of counts, does that possibly mean that they're the same thing? So let's take this into uh, Mikey Nope's concept of 3D spinning, where we have our together L spinning, or we have our split L spinning, or our uh, infinite L spinning, as it were. Um, in which case, let's say I start off in a place where I'm in split L, and launch into the inversion, sure enough, I'm going to find that I can flatten this down to either split time same direction, or if I take it back out, I can just as easily flatten it down into the split opposites inversion, right? So, let's take this to its next logical conclusion and say, okay, so this is all fine and dandy for uh, vertical inversions, but if, if this is all true, then there should be inversions that mix uh, vertical and horizontal planes in order to uh, create the same kind of feel. And by gum, you'd be right. In fact, here's a prime example right here, where my right hand is the horizontal one, and my left hand is the vertical one. And it's interesting, because it actually reminds me quite a bit of uh, atomic weaves in a lot of ways. The way this is done, it, like literally, it is the exact same inversion as this one and this one. The only difference is that instead of uh, spotting the center point of it uh, from a ring around my arms this way, the ring around my arms becomes a diagonal ring instead, right? So with my right hand rotating, and if I look down at it from above, it looks like it's going, pardon me, uh, clockwise and my left hand still feels like it's going forwards, the left hand is going to reach in and around. And the key here is to remember that every time you go through that inversion, the poi is going to switch which side of the hand it happens to be spinning on. So it, say we start off with uh, right hand poi spinning on the right side of the body, it's going to wind up spinning on the left side of the body, right? And likewise, when we talk about doing the corkscrew kind of motion right here, on one beat we're going to be starting with the poi underneath the hand, and on the other one we're going to be starting it with it above the hand, and that'll help you find kind of the funky little atomic meshes, right? But other than that, it's the exact same movement, no difference. Woo! Cool. So, um, I think the light has finally left me here, so I'm going to wrap this up, but uh, there's been a whole lot of fun experimentations that I've been doing with inversions lately, so expect a much longer tech blog with a little bit of uh, inversion theory coming in the next two weeks, yeah? Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one. Peace.